Emily, I'd be happy to try and answer your questions. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I recently watched the movie Gravity. What's the chance of that the disaster that happened in the movie Gravity happening to the real space station? I saw the movie Gravity also, and the problem they had was some uh, some debris from space, some rocks and pieces from space went into their spaceship and caused damage to the spaceship. The International Space Station gets hit by rocks all the time, but little tiny ones like grains of sand, and it has armor on the outsides, so it's protected. But there is a chance, it wouldn't be like in the movie, but there is a chance that a big piece would hit it, like maybe something the size of your fist, and that would punch a hole in the space station. So we practice for that. We practice that suddenly the space station is losing pressure, and we close up hatches, and we put on oxygen masks, and we get into a safe part of the ship, and maybe we even get into our little lifeboat spaceship, the Soyuz, just in case. So there is a chance, and so we train for it and practice for it so that the disaster that happened in the movie wouldn't happen to us. Is it scary in space knowing that you could die at any moment? Is it scary on Earth knowing that you could die any moment? On space? No, I'm asking you, is it scary on Earth? Because you could die any Not moment really. here too. Think about it, there are accidents happen on Earth all the time. Think what just happened in Nepal with that huge earthquake. It killed all sorts of people just like that. So the question is, do you allow yourself to be scared all the time or not? Because there's a difference between scary and being scared. That's a personal decision. And it depends how you learn about things. You know, do I live in a place where there are earthquakes? Do I live in a place where there are tornadoes and hurricanes and tidal waves and, and uh, gigantic tigers and things. What scares me? What do I learn about? And therefore, what have I taught myself so that I don't run around afraid all the time? And it doesn't matter whether you're in Toronto or whether you're on a spaceship. The real key is what have you learned so that you don't just run around scared? What do you know so that you can decide how you're going to live your life? And you don't want to live a life in fear, whether you're uh, 10 years old or whether you're an astronaut on a spaceship. It's an interesting, interesting place to be, but I was never scared because I really understood what I was doing. Has there ever been a conflict on space, like two people don't get along with each other? Uh, we don't just randomly take people and show up in space together like they do in the movies. We select astronauts really carefully from all across Canada and all around the world. When I was selected, they had over 5,000 people apply and they only chose four of us and only two of us got to go live on a space station. It's really rare. So the crew is put together years in advance and you train together and you learn how to get along. You're the sort of people that get along anyway. And so by the time you get to space, you know each other really, really well and you've practiced together for years and years, and you recognize that what you're doing is important. So you, 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 you put yourself second. You put other people first. And so the conflicts, I flew in space three times. I went uh, to two different space stations. I lived in space for half a year, and we never once had an emotional conflict, never once. Partially because of the type of people we are, partially by training, and partially because we deliberately chose not to. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Very nice to meet you, Michelle. So what do you miss most when you are in space? Michelle, I try and never miss anything. Uh, I, I try and never spend my time being somewhere wishing I was somewhere else. I, I just, I don't think it's a useful way to go through life. I'm really way more interested in talking to you you know, than, than missing something that's, that exists somewhere else. Because this is what I'm doing right now. And it was the same in space. Uh, I could see the whole world every day. I saw all seven billion people every day. It was busy, I had important stuff to do, uh, I was weightless. So I spent almost no time missing things. It's a magnificent, interesting place to be. It would have been nice to have my family there with me. I miss, you know, hugging my wife. Uh, I miss a piece of pizza or something, 
But really, I didn't miss anything. It's a magnificent human experience, and uh, and it's a wonderful thing to have had in my life so far. What do you miss most when you return to Earth? Uh, it's the thing that is so different about being in space is that you're weightless. You can fly. It's it's like. Imagine if you got to be Superwoman for a day, where you could fly everywhere you went, and you spent a whole day flying around the city and flying around the world, and then you weren't Superwoman anymore. Would would you miss it, or would you just say, "Wow, I got to be Superwoman for a while. That's pretty special." So I, I love weightlessness, but I don't I don't dislike life on Earth because I was weightless once. So I, I enjoyed weightlessness. I enjoyed seeing the whole world, but I went around the world 2,600 times. So it sort of just made me appreciate more who I am right now, rather than just missing it. What do you think about the one-way trip to Mars, and do you think it will be a reality? No, there, there's no one-way trip to Mars happening. That, that's just an idea. It's just a thought. In order to actually go to Mars, we need to build spaceships. We need to invent all sorts of things that no one's invented yet. We need different engines. We need equipment that will keep us alive. We need a way to land on Mars. We need a habitats on Mars. We need spacesuits on Mars. None of that stuff has been invented yet. So the way to go to Mars is not just by saying, "Hey, we're going to go to Mars." The way to go to Mars is to is to start inventing things and then test them and prove that they work one at a time. And so the the idea is good, but the reality is uh, we're a long way from going to Mars. We we need to we need we're we're like we, we would kill everybody if we tried to go to Mars now over and over and over and over again. We don't know how to do it. So eventually we will. You're you're probably a good age to live on the moon. Maybe you're young enough to be able to live on Mars. We'll see how fast we invent things. Uh, and I hope that some of the things that I helped invent will let you live on the moon, and maybe some of the stuff you'll invent will help people live on Mars. Uh, what is the future plan for the Canadian space program? Uh, Canada has been a world leader in space since the very beginning, for over 50 years. We we were the third nation on Earth in space, and so I think we'll keep doing what we've always been doing. We build satellites that help us, like so we can communicate. We build satellites that teach us about the world, monitoring pollution, looking at how the climate is changing, looking at the ice in the Arctic. We build pieces for other people's satellites, and then we help to explore the universe. And Canadians uh, have been on board lots of different spaceships. So I think all of those things will keep happening as part of the Canadian Space Agency.